How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Mass Beer Reviews, back with another review. Back with another Joe. Yes. Uh, ma me, Matt, Mass Beer Reviews, Joe, NAPA Beer Reviews here doing a bunch of beer reviews. And uh, we're going to be doing uh, a little keen goodness in the form of their Silent Nights, which is an Imperial Stout. Um, you're a fan of Kane. Everything you've had from them, you've been a fan of, right? I have, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. me too. And almost everything I've had from Kane, uh, you've given to me, or I've tried through you. Yeah. So, well, not almost everything. Uh, no, yeah, there's, <laughs> there, I don't know why I said almost. Yeah, no, because it's just uh, uh, pretty much everything. Well, you know, when you when you get good beer, you want to share it with your friends. Joe's yeah. my friend. Same way he gets good beer, he shares it with me. I share it with him. So there we go. But this bottle was shared to me from Russ from Hazlitt, New Jersey. Thank you very much, buddy. Um, really excited to dive into this. I actually got this only a couple days ago and kind of chomping at it to dive into it. So, cool. do it. Uh, as far as what it says in the bottle, K Brew Company Silent Nights Imperial Stout, 10.7% alcohol by volume. Uh, Silent Nights. Silent Nights is a an Imperial Stout brewed for the quiet off season on the coast. Star, no, not starring. Starting with uh, how do you say that one? I, I, I want to say Hakon or Haklin. That's. It looks like. Is that a C or an E? A K L C Y O N. I have no idea. I've never seen that. Okay. I've never seen that. Haklon Pale and a traditional British malt base, a traditional British malt base, that adds a toasty, biscuity character to the beer. We add dark, roasted, and caramel malts from notes for notes of chocolate, coffee, and dark fruits. Generous use of American hops add bold but complementarily flavors and aromas that bring everything together in a full-bodied and richly complex ale. For a very special time of the year. So yeah. Label-wise, it's Kane. I've said this, and I don't mean this is a uh, knock on Kane, but it's very East Coast brewery. Yes. I mean, it basically looks like a brewery beer, but yeah. in, in the Kane style. The way they do yeah, their labeling, it's very, I... very brewery-like. and But their labeling's awesome, so mm -hmm. it's not pooping on it. It's the same as it looks like. So. I've never actually noticed that, uh, that comparison before of, like... Yeah, it's very, very brewery like, so let's see what she's got to offer. I probably did like just subconsciously. Sub subliminally, yeah, subconsciously, subliminally, or however mm. you say that word. Uh, holy fuck. That's uh that's a pretty good head. That's no carbonation issues with uh, <laughs> with this one. Me and Joe just did a bunch of reviews of his uh, project brews from a school. Yeah. And Friends oh, Project oh, Friends Bruce. Project Bruce. Brews. And, uh, yeah, carbonation was a bit of an issue. Now, in this, that is, like, if you're going to go look at the textbook version of creaminess. Like, look how tightly compact those yeah. fucking bubbles are. You know what I mean? It's n not even a fucking joke. And the top Even the big ones are, are small. small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the creaminess, I mean, it almost looks... I want to say it looks like almost like wart. Mm -hmm. like, or it almost looks like... A boy, rather than word, it looks at like the top of your boil. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you're actually brewing a beer. You know what I mean? It just has this kind of creamy deliciousness to it. Um, yeah. So and it's dark. It's amazing. It's dark as dark could be. Yeah. You barely Nothing. get a little bit of color along the edge of it, and that's pretty much nah. it. So let's get a nose in a second. Hops, man. Oh, I'm just getting yeah. roasted malt and hops. Really. Really, now I swirl it around and smell. It's like really creamy, like somewhere like a milk dark chocolate mm -hmm. kind of roasted malt creaminess. This is this is weird to to say, but I'm getting the almost same kind of fruity vibe that I was getting off the uh, the one project out. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, like the weird like I don't know if it's just if it's just me or. What's going on? But like, I'm getting that weird, like, that same like peach skinny kind of. It's almost the exact same smell. Yeah, for me, it's just when I was when he was talking about that with the other review, I was going more like marshmallow mm. chocolate mixture. With this, I'm going more like a super super like um, creamy chocolatiness, like um, mm. like somewhere between. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, like a middle of a uh, uh, Three Musketeers kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I'm getting off this, but I'm also getting like a a biting, slightly 
piney, slightly dank, hot presence. Like it's yeah, not... there, there's that as well. But that first, like that fruitiness, just immediately clicked with me. I'm like, oh, that's the same kind of aroma that I was nope. getting off of yeah. that other beer. I'm not saying you know nothing on on Kane or my friend James, but I I would hazard that Kane's. Better. <laughs> Nothing against James, but it's just that you know you get you smell something, and even if it's something that you just had five minutes ago, uh, if you can equate it to something else, you know, it's I don't know. It's just it's a weird a weird sync up that happens. Yeah, for me, this is all this is all like this is all cake. Mm. It's almost like a chocolate cake brewed with marshmallow. It kind of like now marsh- that you say cake, there is a very cakiness. Yeah, it's like it. It, it's like somewhere between a baked cake and a raw cake. Like it's it's done, but it's barely done. But there's like marshmallows involved. There's yeah. chocolate involved. But it's like almost like someone like sprinkled like um like if you get like um if you do like a cake, you do zest on it. Mm. Or if you want to zest up a cake, you do orange stuff like that. And almost like somebody zested up. Uh, like some kind of pininess, kind of sweet kind of pininess on it. So I'm yeah. going to dive in. Yeah. See what this is about. Yes. Cheers. Yeah. I just want to... That mouth feels so fucking good. It's yeah, it is. Funny. Like this. <laughs> if, you, if you... Out there, if you uh, watch any of our... Our podcasts, uh, I love beer radios. If you just watch the, the most recent one, um, and by the, whenever this video comes out, uh, it will be our year end year end wrap up. Matt equated uh, the levels of my liking of beer, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I caught it. And this is I I would say third stage. So uh, go watch the year end wrap up, and uh, you'll get my. You, you can then see my facial expressions. Yeah, it's a. Uh... That's that's funny because they're all true too. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> first thing I get before I even swallow it is such a creamy fluffiness. It's not even fucking funny. It's almost borderline illegal, <laughs> or it should be. Or no, it shouldn't be. Don't take this away from me. Yeah. But um, so it's like you get that you get in your mouth. And I'm like kind of tossing it around before I open my mouth and kind of swallow on it. Mm. It's just so much. Creamy, almost nitro like, and and, yeah. and and creaminess, but without being, without being nitro. The second you swallow, and that's the problem. With, uh, if you do nitrogenized stuff, you, you pull a little bit of flavor away. Because you do. what you're doing yeah. is you're just pumping it full of nitro, and you're kind of go, sacrificing a little bit of flavor from mm-hmm. body. And you, that being the the reason it flashes off, it cascades the way it is, nitrogen being the most abundant. Thing our atmosphere, it it leaves yeah. immediately. Yeah, it's very hard to it's hard to keep it in there. Yeah, and this this gives you that nitro kind of mouthfeel. When you swallow it, you get a really decent helping of roasted malts, but you also get a nice helping, almost as equal, of like of a piney hop, but it's not, and it's not, like I said earlier, it's dank, it's not, it's just straight up pineyness. Yeah. It's almost like a, a subtle candy pine, it's not overly, like, it's not palate smacking dry kind of piney, like mm. Firestone Walkery or something like that. It's like, it complements the roasted malt to where it's like, okay, it just works for me. Um, there's definitely like some kind of chocolate component involved for me, uh, but it's all about the roasted malts and that kind of hot presence kind of playing off each other. This this is the kind of roastiness that I really like. Um, non bittering. Yeah, non bittering, not super dry. Uh, it's the a lot, I say this all the time, but a lot of the lower ABV stouts that I've had are gearing away from it. Almost like brewers everywhere have heard my complaints and are answering it personally. <laughs> um, but uh, lower ABV stouts, to me, tended to go overly dry and overly roasty, and I didn't like that. I liked the creamier sweetness yeah. of your stouts that started at, like, roughly 8% and went up. You know, and that's what this is. Yeah, it's... Granted, it's, it's a, 
you know, because it is a 10.7% stealth, yeah. but that's beside the point. If you were to tell me, I don't think there is, but if you were to tell me there was lactose in here, I wouldn't argue with you. I don't think there is, because I'm not getting that from this beer. I'm not mm-hmm. getting that atypical lactose kind of, like, sweetness from it, but it just, it, it tastes milk. It's like a milk stout without the milk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And then it has that hot presence that kind of plays off that roasted, like you said, it's a roasted malt that's non-bittering and non-biting, non-drying, mm-hmm. but then you get the, like, a lot of people have the roasted malt that's bitter, so you get that kind of bitter component playing off the roasted malt. Mm-hmm. This is the roasted malt with no bittering from the roasted malt, you're getting the bittering from the pine and hop, so it's yeah. kind of like, you're getting that, but it's from the hop presence, so it just plays differently. Yeah. Um, and I was, I'm looking at the back of the, uh, the label and it says uh, notes of coffee, chocolate, and dark fruits. Uh, I am getting a little bit of a dark fruitiness, and that's another. That's another thing that I really like, and I really started to look for more in imperial stouts. Um, I've probably said it in the past, but I did a, uh, a vertical of the Czar from Avery, yeah. and the 2010 version and that's, had that's, that in fucking space. Oh yeah, that's the dark fruit king when it comes to imperial stouts. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious to see if 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 uh, if Kane, if this is, has any kind of Belgian yeast kind of floating around in it, um, just because I know when they when they put this font style on their beers, it's typically a, a Belgian influenced beer. I don't get much of that there, except no. for the dark fruits. You can get that a little bit from Belgian yeast, but um, it's just a really cool fucking beer. I'm not a huge hot person in my imperial stouts. Um, I usually kind of bitch about it. And um, and uh, when I heard this coming out, I was like, coming out, I was like, eh, hot forward imperial stout, yada yada yada. But well, you um, had your you had your friend George tell you. Yeah, my buddy who George basically lives at Kane. Yeah, my buddy George who lives there is like, you want to pick <laughs> want, want me to pick you one up? I was like, eh, I don't know. And I passed on it. And I was like, man, I should have got one. Why am I fucking an asshole? Because the price point, the price point is pretty awesome. He wrapped it in tape so ah. the, the thing didn't pop off. Um, but um, and then uh, I was lucky enough to have Russ um, offer to send me one, and he sent it to me, and I'm absolutely fucking glad I got to try it and got yeah. to fucking review it. This is the other thing I've never seen in a bottle before. You probably can't see it right there because the focus probably won't focus in. But I've never seen it. They're laser etching their dates up by the neck. Oh, I've wow. never seen that before. It's the day and the year, so you can see 297 and 15, so it's the 297th day of 2015. That's what I assume it is. It I makes sense. Ass- to, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. It makes sense for that. I've never seen that before. I've seen I'm, laser etching of bottles, but not like... It's there, usually so. like... Uh, typically on a bottle this size, my first to look at thought that. of looking at it is like right here. My first like in this thought area. is to look at this, because usually when you're talking about 750, you just throw the date somewhere on the label itself. Yeah. But uh, if if it's not on the, I should yeah. say, first spot uh, label, second spot, but f- first typically for laser etching mm-hmm. is somewhere on the back, either like yeah. above the label here or like on the sides somewhere. Yeah. You know, but never up here in like a really small... Like you would miss this, yeah. If you didn't know it was, if you didn't know it was there. The only reason I knew it was there is because I was like, he uh, Russ packed this really awesome, and he had like um, several streams of tape coming down and wrapped it around. So mm-hmm. I was like sitting there picking tape off, going like this. That's the, yeah. That's the only reason I saw. I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, oh, it's a date. You know what I mean? That's the only reason I caught it. But um, let's talk about it for a bit. Um, is it one of the better imperial stouts I've had as of late? Yeah. It is. Yeah, I would say um, that as well. It's 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 outside the norm, though. It's mm-hmm. not typically like if I would say, "Here's an imperial stout. Try this." You'd be like, "This is kind of different." It's mm-hmm. not going to be your atypical textbook BJCP bullshit fucking imperial stout. It's got it's like somewhere between a regular stout or it's somewhere between a, an imperial stout, a Russian imperial stout, and a milk stout. Um, but it also has that hot presence going on, so it's it's all over the place in a good way. Um, it's a really well-made beer, and that's kind of like one of Kane's kind of calling cards. They just don't really the cleanliness is so well. They're spot on. There's not mm-hmm. not there's really no negative kind of flavors yeah. in there. If you taste something, it's there for a reason. It, yeah, I was, so gonna, I was gonna you, say there's nothing off about it. Yeah, if you, if you don't like the flavor, it's because you don't, you don't like, like that. You don't like the flavor. They meant it to be there. Mm-hmm. So um, when I buy it again, fuck yeah, I buy it again. Um, I yeah, believe I this well. was twelve bucks. 
for that's seven fifty. That's not bad at all. You know, in a in a beautiful world, we could all get beers in twelve ounce bottles, and we could all get them in four packs, and we could all pay twelve bucks, which is would be great for. For this beer. Like this that. would be like that like you talk about like if you're gonna put it up against like let's say a Bolshevik bastard. Let's mm-hmm. say we put it up against that beer. Yeah. What's that? Nine dollars for a four pack. Uh yeah, about nine ten dollars for four pack. I like Canadian. Bolshe- I like so this $9 beer. Nine dollars American. Okay. Yeah, I like this beer better than Bolshevik bastard. But I like Bolshevik bastard. Bolshevik bastard four bottles in a ten dollar four pack. Yeah. Better than this, but it's kind of like splitting hairs. Do you it, know what I mean? At that point, you you really are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's like I don't mind the seven fifty format, especially if I have someone to share it with. But yeah, I'm perfectly comfortable spending twelve dollars for a bottle this size. This is actually twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for a bottle this size is where my ideal price. Yeah. 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 And even though, and that's the point I was trying to make is that you're still making it way better in single or 12 ounce bottles oh, yeah. price point wise if you're, if you're paying $15 for a four pack yeah. but since that's is the only format they throw out besides their singular cans of head high yeah. uh, which is their IPA um, I don't mind it and mm-hmm. um, say if you like what if you like this hmm you like hop forward imperial stuff if you like but, Hop Ford Imperial Stouts, but not in the same way, because I do not like um, Old Rasputin from North Coast, and I mm. and that's a Hop Ford Russian Imperial, and I wouldn't put it in the same class. No, it's neither a, would it, I. It, um, that's a, the one beer, and I was talking about this off camera before we did this review. Um, Sean, um, C word Sean, uh, he sent me a, uh, <laughs> a bunch of beers from the West Coast, and one of them was Smudge Pot Russian Imperial Stout. I forget the name of the brewery, but that I want to say it's that. It's from that fucking Barley Forge place. That sounds like it was from there. Might be. Never know. But uh, Smudge Pot, um, Russian Imperial Stout, if you like that. If you like um, if you like a nice, piney, minty kind of, not overly dank, not overly dry, not overly bittering kind of hop in your stouts, then you'd definitely be in this, because it's just that good of a beer. Yeah. It's awesome. So, um, yeah. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And tell your friends because whatever. Um, if you want to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Massive Beers, and all four of those places. If you would like to check Joseph out, you can at... NEPABeerReviews.squarespace.com Also Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at NEPABeerReviews. So there you go. Another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully you're enjoying a beautiful hot forward imperial stout right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers.